this module, let's look at how tools calculate cell delay. In this module, you'll learn to identify the cell delay information that comes from the libraries, and also how these uh, table lookup models are used to calculate the cell delay. As we saw before, each cell has one or more timing arcs, and each of these timing arcs have a delay associated with them. And so the propagation delay through the cell is commonly known as cell delay. So we calculate cell delay based on the intrinsic delay of the timing arcs, what load it's driving. So basically we um, measure the output load and then based on that load, uh, we actually uh, determine uh, the delay of the cell. And also, uh, what is the input transition? Uh, sometimes uh, input transition and input slew are actually kind of interchangeably used. And uh, so uh, basically, we're using the input slews uh, or transitions to calculate the uh, delay through the cell. You can break down cell delay into transition times, intrinsic delay, and uh, propagation delay. So transition time is when uh, the pin actually has to change states from low to high or high to low. That is considered transition. And uh, intrinsic delay is the delay of the cell when uh, zero signal is applied. And um, basically, uh, no transition time, and there is no output load, and that's when intrinsic delay is measured. And finally, propagation delay is the total delay uh, between when uh, the input signal changes state to when the output uh, changes state. So that whole thing is considered as uh, the propagation delay or the uh, cell delay. The propagation delays are measured from when the input threshold fall percentage point to the output uh, threshold percentage point. So if you say 50% of the input signal uh, change has happened to 50% of the output signal change has happened, then that could be considered as uh, the cell delay. Uh, so uh, if you uh, look at the libraries, these input threshold percentages and output threshold percentages are given for both rise and fall. And so therefore, depending on what the input signal is doing and what the output signal is doing, we basically measure uh, the delay from uh, the input signal to the output signal based on these uh, percentage thresholds. So uh, in this example, uh, we are measuring uh, the cell delay from 60% of the input to 40% of the output because the input is actually uh, measured with 60% and the output is measured at 40%. Each cell in the library has uh, the model for that particular cell which defines what the cell footprint is, what the area of that cell is, and uh, basically what are the pins, what are the directions of the pins, uh, what is the output function, and any delays associated with that particular cell, and any transition times, and power dissipation, what are the yields. I mean, you'll see a lot of different data for that particular cell in that particular cell model. Uh, there are two main models for lookup tables. One is a called uh, the two-dimensional lookup table, which uses the input slew and output load uh, to determine the delay. And then there is the three-dimensional lookup table, which uses the input uh, slew, the output load, and also the related output load uh, as well. So if there are multiple uh, outputs, uh, so what is the load as seen by the cell uh, for pin Y, for example, and then there is another pin Y bar, 
and both of these are outputs and in which case the related output uh, is actually uh, for the y bar uh, what is the output uh, what is the delay at the output y based on the delay of output y bar um, so uh, these are uh, what you would see uh, as the lookup tables and um, you know you also have all the timing arc information for all the inputs to outputs uh, what is the output function so all of these different things are actually listed and uh, the uh, lookup tables the accuracy of it uh, depends on the accuracy of the spice simulations and so because these models require very few variables they're very easy to calibrate and uh, these library characterization teams create these cell models for you to actually use at uh, different slew and uh, load variations and uh, they're plugged into your dot libs or uh, the liberty library models and that is what you would use in your static timing analysis here we show an example of a 2d lookup table model and uh, if you look at the dot lib or the library itself uh, the slew is actually plotted uh, on the y-axis here and uh, the load is plotted on the x-axis so uh, <coughs> index 1 would then be the load and index 2 would be the slew and so uh, for an example uh, for a slew of 1.05 and uh, for a load of 0.3279 uh, it's showing 0.3643 so you would actually determine that based on the lookup table and that's what the tool will also do in a 3d lookup table model you also have uh, the related output load as seen by uh, Q and so therefore that Q bar of whatever the loading is is our QN uh, the loading is actually applied and uh, thus calculating the delay at Q. So this uh, illustration here basically shows the um, slew axis and the load axis and load to axis. And uh, for this lookup table, uh, the uh, related output uh, pin capacitance or net capacitance is um, used as two values and so once you locate uh, the uh, slew and load for the third one uh, we use the load 2 and thus calculate uh, the delay based on uh, load 2 and if the delay doesn't fall uh, on any one of these uh, load points then basically what the tool does is it interpolates the values and that's coming up with the uh, final number for your cell delay try the following activity to reinforce your learning 